Welcome back to the final episode of CCTV at Chemcon the Americas 2018. With today, an interview on CBI, a statement on K-Reach and the final coverage of our local reporter Ron. But first some sound bites from our sessions on Asia. Today morning's session uh, basically wrapped up some very useful and very informative regulatory information in China, Japan, uh, Southeast Asia and uh, basically the India. So for China part, uh, our speaker Mr. Xiong uh, Mr. Kiefer and uh, Ms. Liu uh, wrapped up some very useful and very informative uh, information about the, the China regulation from the very large scope down to a very detailed, you know, uh, some information like uh, data requirement, like the whole China regulation. For Japan, Animoto-san gave us a very clear uh, structure of how the Japan CSCO uh, works. Basically, uh, he gave us you know, some information about how to use those hazardous chemicals in Japan, how to uh, uh, import those chemicals uh, legally. Well, for session 10, the first speaker, Caroline, uh, gave, us, gave us a very you know, uh, uh, brief introduction of uh, six countries' chemical reg regulations. Well, uh, we have learned the whole uh, framework uh, the very basic information and some of those, you know, GHS, some of those chemical regulations in all those countries. And for uh, Malaysia, Thailand, and India, uh, Mr. Maslin and Ms. Wang Yaras and Karen gave us uh, some very detailed uh, information on those three countries about, you know, uh, the chemical regulations, how it works in those three countries and uh, basically uh, the outlook for the future and how the chemicals will be regulated in the future after some of those uh, laws and legislations uh, uh, is published. By simplifying and optimizing the notification tabs, I think industry will gain and enjoy a lot of convenience and efficiency in their notification process. And in the meantime, the responsibilities of the industry will be strengthened. Time to connect to Ron. Ron, this weekend Mardi Gras starts in New Orleans. Is there a jazz song that we can connect to Mardi Gras? Oh, absolutely. Professor Longhair's Mardi Gras in New Orleans. You've been our music professor this week. Can you tell us a bit more about Professor Longhair? Of course. I first uh, met Professor Longhair. My dad had him over to the house. I must have been about six years old. And he was playing piano in our piano room. And he would, he would keep timing with his foot, but he would hit his foot up against the piano and O upright, and I just thought that was so fascinating. Interesting. Can you play Professor's long hair Mardi Gras in New Orleans for us while we show what happens in the city during Mardi Gras? Yes. The origins of Mardi Gras or Fat Tuesday can be traced to medieval Europe. From here, the traditional revelry of buff gras. A fatty calf followed France to her colony since the 19th century. New Orleans held a mass ball and street procession of carriages and horseback riders to celebrate Mardi Gras. When we go to New Orleans, you better go see the Mardi Gras. When you go to New Orleans, you better go see the Mardi Gras. When you get to New Orleans, Somebody show you the Zulu Queen. 1872 was the year that the idea of the King of Carnival Rex was conceived. The first King Louis Solomon to preside over the parade honoring the visiting Russian Grand Duke Alexis Romanov by using the Romanov's family colors of purple, green and gold, as the carnival official colors. Purple stands for justice, gold for power, and green for faith. One of the first and most beloved crews to make its appearance in the 20th century was Zulu. The King of Zulu Parade in 1949 was Louis Armstrong. When you get to the money, somebody show you the Zulu Queen. We will definitely explore this phenomenon. Mardi Gras is partly about hiding behind masks, people not disclosing who they are. Today's interview discusses another kind of secrecy, confidential business information, or CBI. Michael, can you define CBI? In, in the US, we uh, refer to CBI as information that has three characteristics. Uh, one, somebody owns it, 
so it's proprietary data. Two, it's confidential, uh, meaning that the owner has taken some steps to keep the information out of the public. And three, uh, if you disclose the information, it will result in some kind of significant or substantial harm to the owner of the information. If industry determines that their interest will be harmed because of lack of data protection, uh, they might decide not to place a substance or a chemical or a product on the market. Um, what can industry and authorities do to circumvent this? Um, certainly, if it's a very large market, like China or the European Union, then, and a large volume of chemical, then the chemical companies, I think, work very closely with the authorities to come to a solution and make sure that the information is protected. However, if it's a small volume chemical or a specialty chemical, then you can have a situation where the manufacturer chooses simply not to put it on the market. And then I think it's really important for the downstream users to get involved. And so it's important for those industries to come forward and to also work with the authorities and find a way that they can um, obtain the chemicals that they need for their products. So on the one hand, uh, uh, industry wants to protect certain information. On the other hand, public has the right to know. In uh, the US, you have the Freedom of Information Act. How difficult is it to strike a balance between industry and public in these cases? Uh, again, I think it depends on where, you're, where you are in the world. In the US, I don't actually feel that we've had a lot of difficulty striking a balance. Uh, certainly with the Tosca amendments now, we have much more clarity about what information is, is going to be in, entitled uh, presumptively to confidential treatment. Uh, what information will always be public, and and for all the information in between that may or may not be confidential, what you need to do to ensure that it it is confidential. So we have we've we've drawn lines, and it, it does, hasn't seemed to be too painful, with one exception, and that is chemical identity information. And now it's time for the statement of the day. Today's statement is about K Reach. With us in our studio today is Aram Kim from Hanwha Chemical. Thank you for joining us today. Glad to meet you. Today the Olympic Winter Games will start in Pyeongchang. As a sports fan, I'm really looking forward to that. Another potentially big happening this year is the K-Reach pre-registration phase that might start. If it starts, could you tell us more about how companies should prepare themselves? Only draft was published. Uh, amended K-Reach, including pre-registration, hasn't been announced yet. But uh, under a new K-Reach, uh, all of the phase-in substance estimate uh, 7,000. Uh, would be registered uh, in a given period. So uh, keep an eye on the progress of the K reach and make a list uh, of uh, candidate sub substance to be registered in advance. And your statement is? Companies should have started their preparations for K reach already. Please share your answer with us. Irem, thank you very much. Thank you. Time to say farewell to my friend. Ron, do you have any suggestions for a great place to visit around New Orleans? Well, well, New Orleans is known by many people as the most hospitable swamp. So why don't we take a ride through the swamps? Sounds like an excellent plan. Since we started this week with born and raised New Orleans musician Lou Armstrong, I think it's appropriate to also finalize this week with a song of him. Do you have any recommendations? Sure. A song that comes to mind is What a Wonderful World. Yeah, nah.
Ron, thank you very much for learning us more than we knew and taking us through the wonderful world of New Orleans and jazz. Very elegant, those alligators. Also this week, a lot to chew on and digest, but still a great seminar to look forward to. Today's forecast focuses on updates of relevant regulatory frameworks for industry in Korea. And furthermore, we take a closer look into global CBI issues. Thank you for watching. It was our privilege sharing all the news with you. We hope you liked it and we look forward to seeing you at Chemcon Europe 2018 in Budapest.